Well, here we are with video three for chapter 19, standing waves. In this video, the main idea that we're going to cover is that a standing wave forms only if half a wavelength or a multiple of half a wavelength fits exactly into the length of the vibrating medium. We're going to look at standing waves by considering waves on a stretched string or spring. Uh, and then we'll be able to apply this to any waves. So let's get going. Now it's possible to produce a wave by tying a rope or a spring to a wall and shaking the free end up and down. What happens is the wave travels down, hits the other end, and then that wave reflects back along that rope or that spring to you. Now, depending on how that attached end is attached, uh, will determine how that reflected wave gets reflected back to you. If that attached end is fixed so that uh, it's immovable, you're going to get a reflected wave that's inverted as it comes back towards you. If, on the other hand, we say we attach it to a ring, that it, and that ring is able to slide up and down on a post, Okay. When that reflected wave comes back, that reflected wave is going to be in the same position as the incident wave was. Okay. It's not going to be inverted. When that end is fixed, though, if we shake the rope just right, we can cause the incident wave and the reflected waves to form what's called a standing wave. A standing wave is a wave that appears to stay in one place. It doesn't seem to move through the medium. Right here is kind of a standard picture of a standing wave. What we have here is we've got the incident wave as it travels down, it hits the other end and then is reflected back. As you continue to shake up and down then, you're getting uh, incident waves and reflected waves back and forth. And what ends up happening is you end up with a part of the rope that moves up and down and a part of the rope that appears to stay in place. And this is kind of a standard picture of a standing wave, where we've got the wave here. These lines here just indicate uh, areas where that rope is as it moves up and down at various points in time. Okay, We'll be doing some stuff where we're actually making standing waves in class, and that picture will become much more clear. Now, in a standing wave, certain parts of that wave remain stationary. Those parts are called the nodes. The nodes are the stationary points on a standing wave. Nodes are, are regions of minimal or zero displacement, and there's minimal or zero energy. You can hold your fingers on either side of the rope at a node, and the rope's not going to touch them. So we can see the nodes at this point, and this point, and this point, and this point, and this point. Those are all nodes in this particular standing wave. Antinodes, on the other hand, are regions of maximum displacement and maximum energy. So each of these points right here are antinodes. Antinodes occur halfway between each of the nodes. Now, let's take a closer look at this wave. If we were to follow it, say it begins here and it is reflected at this point down here. And it, as it travels down this length, we can see that one wavelength, which is, remember, defined as the distance between crest to crest or trough to trough. So the wavelength is from this point here. It travels down. There's a trough. There's a crest. There's a wavelength. So this line right here is equal to one wavelength. Okay, so I can also put it down here at, at successive troughs, and we see that that's one wavelength. Now let's see what happens when we put it against nodes, right? When I set it here, so it's at, it begins at a node here and ends at a node here, we see that one wavelength is equal to the distance between three nodes. So if we were to just measure the distance between any three nodes, one, two, three, that's equal to one wavelength, okay? We can put that uh, over here as well, and we can count nodes, okay? Where we go, one, two, three, there's a wavelength. Now what this also tells us, then, is that the distance between adjacent nodes, so the distance between this node and this node, is going to be equal to one half of the wavelength. See, what we're going to find is that we can take a rope, and depending on how, we, how frequently we shake that rope up and down, 
we can get different standing wave patterns, okay? If we go kind of slowly, we can get just a single standing wave like this here. Now the distance then between this node and this node is equal to half a wavelength. So what that tells us is if we can just measure the rope, right, and we get this standing wave, then we can determine the wavelength. For this standing wave, we've got one, two, three nodes, right? So we can be able to, we can just measure the distance between the nodes and get the wavelength from it. Okay, so here, this, in this standing wave, in this standing wave pattern, we've got one, two, three, four nodes, right? Well, because each, the distance between each node is half a wavelength, that tells us then that the length of this rope is equal to three over two times the wavelength. Or we could figure out the wavelength of this wave by simply measuring the length of the rope and taking two-thirds of that length. In this standing wave, right, we've got one, two, three nodes, which tells us then that the length of this rope is equal to the wavelength, okay? So we could figure out uh, the, the wavelength in this rope simply by measuring the length of the rope itself. And then in this one, you can see that there's just the one, the, the two nodes, the one single anti-node, so it's the length of this rope is equal to half the wavelength, and the wavelength itself will be equal to uh, two times the length of the rope. Now these different standing wave patterns we call harmonics. If you play any kind of musical instrument, you've probably heard of harmonics, right? So uh, on a stringed instrument like a guitar, for example, we can get these three first three harmonics. We can figure out the wavelength simply by measuring the length of the string. Now make sure you make note of all of these because you'll need to remember that. So the reason we get standing waves at all is because of interference. So when two waves of equal amplitude and wavelength pass through each other in opposite directions, the waves are always out of phase, right, at the nodes. These nodes are these stable regions then of destructive interference. The incident and reflected waves interfere to produce a standing wave, and the nodes are just are places that remain stationary. So standing waves are set up in the strings of musical instruments that are struck, like a guitar or piano, that kind of thing. Any string instrument, violin, sets up standing waves. They're also set up in the uh, air of, an, uh, of a pipe organ, or if you ever blow across like a, a glass bottle when uh, you, you produce a standing wave in that bottle. So standing waves can be produced in either transverse or longitudinal waves. We're going to uh, take some time and, and produce standing waves in a spring in class. We'll see you then.